Hey Chopper, this viewer's not subscribed. Cardi Kaizoku. Hey Chopper. This video is sponsored by Card Market, Europe's largest online marketplace for trading card games. That also means we're gonna have Card Market data in this dashboard really soon. So wait just a little bit more, guys. It's market review time, baby. Okay, uh, the last one we did was on the 12th. What has changed in the game since then? Well, the EU finals has happened. NA finals has happened. Australia finals has happened and Latin America. I think that's everybody, right? I'm not too sure about Japan or Singapore or the rest of Asia, but all the regions that use the English cards, I know all their championships have gone and passed. What else? Uh, EB01 released in Japan or in Asia, technically. Yeah, that's about it, I'd say. So let's take a look at what our market review dashboard looks with this new data in mind. And by the way, this is my uh, market review 2.0 dashboard. It's 2.0 in that uh, I rebuilt it from the ground up. It's using a completely different backend. I'm using an actual database now. I don't know why I didn't do it in the first place, uh, but yeah, I'm well more versed in SQL. So I do, I can do a lot more cool things now with my data, but pretty much all the tabs are gonna be the same, but I did add two new tabs that I'll show off in a bit. Oh, and before I start, I have to tease it a little, sorry. If you do want access to this dashboard, I do grant access to you. If you're a marketeer patron on my Patreon, and as you can see, I, I work on this dashboard continually. I added a bunch of new features, so you'll always see new things every now and then. And if you don't want to wait for me to make these videos, you can peruse this dashboard on your own, filter it the way you want, look at any analysis that you're interested in. You don't have to follow me. Maybe you're the market genius, but I make the tool for you to use if you want. All right, jumping into the movers. So just at a glance, at a very top level with all cards, uh, the biggest increase is this treasure cup, Zoro. Holy crap. He went up $1,000 for some reason. The overall state of the card game, we can see here it is... Okay, if you got like a one-off of every card in the game, that of every card that ever existed, it'd be like $53,000. That's insane for uh, cardboard. It looks like a lot of the biggest increases have been these championship prizes. People are already selling them. That is pretty crazy. But let's break this down by set. Oops, by set. Let's take a look at OP01. So for the past like month, two months or so, OP01 prices have just keep kept going up. And as we can see here, that seems to still be the case, but not as drastic as it was before. Because look, between like what is this? Beginning of January to the middle of January, that's when it like turbo increased. But yeah, after that it seems to have of stabilized it's still increasing though just not as drastically biggest increase in this period manga shanks goes up 380 dollars altar nami continue to go up almost 400 dollars now and then luffy here leader luffy 297 the least used usable leader in this set but costs quite a lot costs even more than blue do flamingo even though blue do flamingo is usable i guess that's the power of being a luffy card Nine cost me hawk goes up $30. Alt art leader Zoro goes up $34. I'm pretty sure this one's influenced by uh, how well Zoro has been placing in the NA championships. Because um, Zoro did get third. I'm going to have an interview with them up soon too, by the way. Then red green law, $400. Holy cow. Yeah, alt art rush Zoro going back up. He, I think he dropped under $100 for like a day. Let's take a look. Yeah, like... Near the end of December, he did drop under 100. I don't know what people were smoking, and now he's back <laughs> up over 130. Oh, also a new feature, by the way. I figured out a way that, like, you can filter the uh, price difference at the top using this date filter here. But the chart on the bottom would show the entire price history for a card that you select. So yeah, Zoro, at the time that I started recording data, was 85 bucks. Now he's 138. Meanwhile, on the top chart, I'm comparing the price between the 12th and the 31st, where he went up $24. So yeah, cool feature, right? I hope. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the decreases. 
Would be interested to see if there's any at all. Or any substantial ones. Ooh. Alt art Sanji went down 5 bucks. What do you guys have against Sanji? 8 cost kit. Regular 8 cost kit went down 3 bucks. Um, this is, I don't know, kind of odd because there is a Perona list that runs him, there is a Yamato list that runs him, and then EB01 just printed um, Supernova support, and then we saw Bonnie teased, Leader Bonnie teased in OP07. So, actually, kind of surprised to see him go down. I would have thought he would have gone up because he fits right into all those decks, especially in the new Bonnie deck. But maybe just English market is just slow to react. The Japanese news. So yeah, maybe it's a good idea to pick some of these guys up. Regular Mihawk went down. Regular Shanks went down. Otama went down. But under a dollar, probably not significant. So we'll just move on to OP02. And I have it by percentage too, but usually the percentage and the price difference like are in parity with each other, so I won't go over it. For the purposes of this video at least, you can go over it on your own if you have access to the dashboard. Let's take a look at the increases in OP02. Yeah, OP02 also gone quite up a lot in value. Now sitting at uh, 3,080-ish, but did go up quite a lot since the beginning of January. That's is this the biggest increase? Now it looks like from uh, October to like the end of the year was the biggest pump for this set. Do you see Ace go up $43, Smoker up 23, Garp up? Yeah, all the Altart leaders are going up because again. I guess these cards are collector's items at this point, but um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, maybe I'll add it somehow in post. Uh, they did announce that they intend to reprint older sets. They didn't say when, and they didn't say which sets, and they didn't say how many. So there's uncertainty in what they're going to do, but um, yeah, they made their intention known. I was expecting it to affect the market a lot more, but it seems like people aren't going to react until they actually see concrete uh, details of what they're planning to do so it could either be good or bad but expect big changes when they do announce that so be prepared for it either way i can't advise you on what to do but you figure it out and then let me know so i can get in on it too <laughs> okay uh so seven cost luffy alt art went up uto's coming out like in a week from now right so this could be why and it's a luffy card that's probably more the reason why unless we see nami here somewhere but nami's a nami card so i can't really say um, everything else, just like staple cards like Odin and the Ultra Leaders and Uta even going up. Nothing to note. Why is Mass Deuce up so high? He went up five dollars. Actually, I made like a tweet where um, since Mass Deuce like doubled in value, and I actually finally sold my Mass Deuce Ultra that I had listed since OP02, that that meant that we were officially in a bubble. And um, I thought it was funny, so please laugh. Okay, let's look at the decreases. Biggest decrease in this period is Little Saudi. Okay, this is really weird because Hanya Ball comes out in OP an EB01, and Hanya Ball, the leader, blue purple leader, revolves completely around this Saudi. Is it this Saudi? Yeah, this is the 2K counter Saudi, right? Yeah, a little confused why this Saudi went down $11. I bet like when somebody figures out the Hanya Ball deck and it does well in the tournament, we're gonna see the Saudi jump way up. So again. Uh, slow ass English market reacting too slow. Borsalino went down six bucks, a little more affordable. Did he ever break 50? Let's take a look. He ever broke 50? No, he never broke $50. Interesting. The closest he got was 49.48. 49.64. Okie dokie. A little more affordable now if you want to pick up Borsalino's. He's still going to be staple up until OP06, probably OP07, to be honest. Because um, Yokomori runs them, Krona runs them, Takazuki runs them, any black deck from then on will probably run them. The alt art also went down. The alt art's way too expensive, just pick up regular Borsalino. Ninebeard went down, Boa went down, Magella went down. We might see purple cards go up actually, because Luffy did win two regionals. Wow. They won Latin America and Australia. Oh, by the way, I'm going to have an interview with the Latin America purple Luffy uh, first place winner as well. So. Expect to see that soon, hope you're excited. I'm gonna try out doing interviews on my channel. Yeah, let's take a look at OB03. Yeah, I should probably announce those interview things in like a separate post or video and not in the middle of my market review that where people who aren't interested in the market are gonna see it. Okay, OP03, Mongo Rare up. Who would have expected that? 
Altart Nami Leader to 30. Up 30 bucks. Altart Katakuri up 30 bucks to 50. Katakuri did not win any regionals. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess he's, he's still easy to play and strong. I guess that's why he's up. And he's a fan favorite character. One poster Luffy, $21. Luchi up. Even Iceberg up. This might be just a collector's thing because OP03 is old enough now, I guess, that there's limited supply in circulation. Yeah, all the Ultra Art leaders here, basically. Wanted posters too. Kuro, the least increased, but still 11 bucks, 12 bucks. Not bad. Oh, sorry. Yellow, black, big mom is also here at 11.50. Um, nothing else I don't think is meta related. Actually, no, these these um, CP9 cards might be due to uh, there's a new Luchi leader coming in OP07, so that might be an anticipation for that. Because that leader involved a lot of like graveyard filling, and then cards like Kaku and Spandam also revolve around the graveyard, and the 7 costs. 6 costs 7k, Rob Luchi, that has Rush, also depends on the discard. Would be nice to see a full CP black Luchi deck. Let's see, 10 cost Big Mom went up. Rosepedal went up. Oh, so the Katakuri deck cards went up, even though Enel has been the one showing results. But maybe we'll see that when we get to OP05. So get the decreases. Oh wait. Yeah, Marco went up too, by the way, because Zoro. I think the Zoro list that did do really well ran. Like two or three Marcos. Sadly, I don't know why. Like... 9 cost Kaido continues to go down in price. I think he's only gone down the last few times I looked. But a Purple Luffy won 2 championships in 2 regions. And this is a staple card in that deck. Why you guys hate 9 cost Kaido? Yeah, he's only gone down since December. Come on, guys. Or I guess this is a good opportunity to invest in him. But yeah, uh, he might disappear in OP06 though, so take with that what you may, but again. People were surprised how well Purple did in general. This set, people were dogging on it, but it actually did really well. So we could see Purple in OP06 too on our end. Don't discount it just yet. Let's look at the decreases. 8 cost Katakuri went down, so did the alt art. There are Katakuri lists that don't run 8 cost Katakuri at all. That did really well. So we start to see that uh, 8 cost Katakuri is not as important. But if you're playing Enel, it is important. But yeah, it is sub $80 now for the uh, base art version. Every other in decrease is like a dollar, so nothing too uh, remarkable there. So let's look at OP04. Okay, Manga Sabo up, all the SP cards up, all the art chart leaders up. That's pretty much the same for 01, 02, 03, and 04 now. Uh, yeah, these increases aren't as drastic. OP04 seems to be pretty stable. It's like what? It is now 196. 60. So since January, it has only gone up 300 ish, and it's probably mostly from the Sabo, to be honest. So yeah, nothing remarkable here, I don't think. Nothing that stands out in regards to the meta or any like future meta changes or market um, influences. And Costo Flamingo went up, Alter Leader, because yeah, it is run in Perona. Probably any green deck in the future too will run this Do Flamingo. So good to invest in him. Trouble went up, alt art trouble, or just all the alt arts in general. Eight cost crocodile went down. Oh, yeah, that's all the increases, so I guess I can just scroll to the decreases since there's so few. Okay, alt art leader crocodile went down. The only alt art leader that went down. Quite a lot, too. Um, yeah, I'm okay with this because I don't like crocodile. But if you're a crocodile fan, uh, my condolences. Nine cost Yamato went down $10, $11. Even though it's staple in Enel and Enel won the North American Championships, spoilers. We could see Yamato go back up. Yeah, it's pretty much staple in Enel, so I don't know what alternative you would have to this Yamato. But the base art version of this card is pretty cheap, so if you want to bling out your Enel deck, now is probably a good time, 70 bucks. Yeah, that's about it for OP04. Let's look at OP05. The value set, the money set. The scalper set. Yeah, look at that. Oh no, wait. Yeah, so these December prices I'll probably have to fix manually. These are people who like, for some reason, posted uh, the Oda Luffy's for sale before the set even came out somehow, and TCG Player allowed that. And I recorded it, so yeah, I'll get rid of these. 
So from December when it released 8,586, now it is over 11,000, or it was for a bit and now it's down a little bit. Actually, OP05 went down the most, but it's still like barely down. Biggest increase in this period is this SP Uta, unusable but very nice art. SP Nami went up $57, nearing $300 herself. Maybe she'll even catch up to the OP01 alt art. Enel went up $127. There was an Enel list, the one that won the uh, NA World Championships, run four of these, and no uh, seven cost big moms. So this might be why too. And again, I think the SP cards in this set are my favorite so far. Manga Kid went up. Actually, yeah, the manga rares aren't the highest increase this period. Maybe the manga rares finally uh, stabilizing in OP05. Yeah, just 20 bucks for Manga Law. Luffy went up 20 bucks because he won two regions as a leader. Finally getting the justice he deserves. I think we'll see a dip here if I click him. Yeah, like a slight dip and he's back up. Purple Luffy dominance. People bought him for quite a lot when he first released, 147. Feel bad for the people who bought him on day one. <laughs> I guess don't buy leaders on day one. Sabo went up. Sign Oda Luffy went up. Ichi went up, Gidatsu went up, the Yamato SP went up, Rebecca went up. Yeah, just Sakazuki cards and staple yellow cards. Let's look at the decreases. Ooh, Tenkaido went down. So did Sabo, probably one of the least used SRs of the set. Regular Tenkaido went down. And Luffy went down. It went down slightly. Yeah, these aren't enough that I think it means anything. Manga Luffy for once did not change in price. I don't think anyone's bought any. <laughs> I guess that's what that means, right? No one's bought any in two weeks. Because he's like freaking $3,000. Yeah, since the 10th, <laughs> he has not changed prices. Or since the 11th. That means no one has bought any. Good. Don't spend 3000 bucks on this. But do buy the alt art version of it. He only went up 80 cents. Yeah, I like the alt art version of this card a lot more. That, that might just be my personal preference. What a weird bump. He almost hit 100 and now he's back down to 70. Why don't you guys like this card? I'll never figure out why. Okay, that is it for the OP sets. Let's take a look at all the starter decks. So for starter decks, yeah, just Love Love Mellow goes up to 10 bucks. Everything else is pretty much the same. I don't think this can be considered a meaningful change or not. Ooh, the Queen does go down, 33 bucks. Is this the most affordable Queen has been in a while? Take a look at the history. Okay, the cheapest that Queen has been was $18 from the time that I started recording data on the 15th of October. So just about double the lowest point. Yeah, I don't think he's still low enough for me to consider picking up more copies, but maybe a little more. Now consider picking up. I just need two more actually. All right, so that is the starter decks. Then we can take a look at the promos real quick. Yeah, the promos are all just money cards. Pre-release winner Luffy continues to go up. Yeah, just all the championship and treasure cup cards. Marco championship, treasure cup. Yeah, there you go. Then let's take a look at one of the new tabs I made. So this is the tournament prices tab. Uh, I have, have a few tournaments here where I scrape the data from. I have uh, treasure cups, I have regionals, I have the two championships here. I need to still get the Latin America and the um, Australia one, but I have America and Europe so far. And then some like big online events that are not run officially by Bandai. So if we wanted to see like Jonas's uh, Enel deck that won the North American championship, you filter by the tournament you want, you can click here. Click on Jonas's name and it'll list every card in his deck and the quantity of the cards in the deck and it'll tell you how much it costs for the card and then how much it would be if you got that many copies. I, I have it set to pick always the cheapest option available. So if you wanted to pick up 4 Katakuris, the minimum you'd want to spend for that is $2.98 based off TCG player prices. Yeah, here's the entire deck. Then I have the total here. If you wanted to pick up this entire Enel deck for yourself, it is $400. If you wanted to get all the alt arts, it'd be 1515 and if you wanted to bling it out with all the championship cards or the rarest version of each card that you can get, it's like 2k. There's that. And then I even have like a trend on the value of the whole deck. So as of today, the deck costs 400 But if you had bought all the cards for it at the beginning of OP05, which was December 8th, 
it would have only been $282. So you would have saved like $120 if you had bought it on day one. If you had bought all the pieces on day one, I mean. We can take a look at Jackson's deck real quick. Yeah, this is the Sakazuki deck that I got second. Or totally knows the most expensive card in this deck. So you'll need $173 just to pick up the Borsalinos and then Great Eruption and Hinas are also quite pricey. 70 bucks a pop to pick up 4 copies of both. He runs a 1 of 10 Kaido. Sneaky sneaky, only 1 Sabo. Yeah, as you can see here, um, this volume 4 tournament pack of Tashigi is cheaper than the starter deck version of the 2k counter Tashigi actually. So that's why it picks this one instead, it's only $1.24. Then you can see here, the Zoro deck costs $105. The uh, red purple Luffy that got fourth cost two hundred twenty-four dollars. So yeah, it just gives you an idea of how much meta decks cost if you were to like build it yourself. And then you can see how these pro players have built their decks, their card decisions, card choices, and stuff like that. I also have a filter on like the placing. So if you wanted to get all the first place decks from all the tournaments I have logged, you can get them here. All the Sakazuki decks, all the Enel decks, and even by leader. If you wanted to see all the Zoro decks, for instance. You can filter it by Zoro, and you can see all the Zoros from all the events, no matter what placing they had. You can see they average around like 100 to 140 ish dollars. The one that Ardit ran at the Raiden Trade Dreamhack Treasure Cup was the cheapest of these. So yeah, that's this tab. I also have a tournament performance tab. This is more tournament stats more than like the card value, but I still have the card value here in case you need to see it. So yeah, this is, for all the tournaments I have logged, this is the um, play rate percentage of each leader. The Sakazuki makes up 44% of all the tournament data that I have at uh, 50 decks, 50 Sakazuki players. Up next is Anil at 18, and then Katakuri at 13, and then I have on this table here the average placement of each leader, and then the number of times that they show up in my tournament results in top 16. So Sakazuki, as I mentioned before, there's 50 Sakazukis in the top 16s of all the tournaments that I've recorded. Sakazuki has won the tournaments four times, He's topped forward 16 times and topped 8 30 times, and then so on for the rest of the leaders if you need that statistic here. And I also have it by card, so let's say I wanted to look at uh, for all Sakazuki decks. So uh, the average placement of decks that ran Mancherry in their Sakazuki deck is 7.66. Then you can see here by the usage percent, Mancherry was run in every Sakazuki deck. So it was Sudo, so it was Great Eruption, so it was Hina. And then yeah, the same top 4, top 1, top 8 statistics here. And then the interesting thing is when you get to the cards that are not 100% usage, like you can see here 96% of Sakazuki decks ran 4 cost Kuzan, so not every deck ran 4 cost Kuzan. And we do see that the average placement is a little lower with 4 cost Kuzan, so you could infer that maybe you don't need 4 cost Kuzan in the current meta. And then there's 96% of decks that ran Ice Age, so 4% didn't run Ice Age, and then the average placements of decks that the hit run Ice Age was also slightly lower, but you could make the argument that Ice Age is not needed too. But again, this is really dependent on sample size. Maybe 50 Sakazuki decks just isn't enough to make sweeping generalizations like that. And again, it's like 7.6 to 7.7. .7. It's not really too much of a concrete number to, to base your decisions off of like that. Maybe this 10 cost Kaido? Is nearing like a average placement of eighth that might mean something that maybe you shouldn't run 10 cost kaido oh yeah here is a good one uh sakazuki decks that do run kobe 12 percent random but they place like average ninth so maybe don't run kobe in your deck but yeah it, again it all depends on sample size and then you can even not do it by one single leader so like let's say you wanted to check all yellow cards you do enel hold control and then press uh Where's Katakuri here? Go for, go for all Enel and Katakuri decks. Veg is used in all of them. In both all Enel and all Katakuri decks. So is Gidatsu. Gidatsu is used in every deck. Thunderbolt is only used in 97%. And then we'll start to see like uh, leader locked cards like 10 cost Big Mom will probably be like yeah usage of 42% because about 42% of the Katakuri decks make up all yellow decks. So that makes sense too. But yeah, you can see it that way. It's not leader locked. Just FYI. But yeah, that is another cool tab that I have in this dashboard now that maybe you guys can figure out a way to use. Take a look at movers by set, going back to the price of cards. So for the period of January 12th to January 31st, 
OP01 increased the most, $859. Yeah, basically all the OPs, OP04 being the least increased. And then starter decks pretty much have stayed the same. So yeah, what we expected. So let's move on to set value. And again, we'll remove promo from this tab because I don't like having the promo skew everything. So yeah, OP05 continues to be the most expensive set, followed by one, two, three, four. Nothing's changed since the beginning. We do see some of the manga rares switch order. Yeah, Law is almost $1,000 now. But yeah, all the top cards are all manga rares and find Oda Luffy. And OP01 leaders. SP Nami is really uh, climbing up here. They're passing even Blue Do Flamingo and uh, Alt Art Katakuri. Maybe she'll even reach OP01 Nami at some point. But there's less than a $100 difference. Take a look at set value trend. Remove promo as usual. Yep, yeah, game continues to be more expensive, but as of lately, not as sharp an increase as we have been seeing. So, could be good news, I guess. Yeah, there's no anomalies between the sets. They all have been kind of flattening out the past week or so. Take a look at card value trends. Individual card level, let's remove promos. Oh, interestingly, a lot of cards have flatlined. I think one here is Manga Luffy from OP05, and then what is this one here? The Oda Luffy hasn't sold in a while, and Shanks hasn't sold in a while. Ultra, uh, Manga Shanks, or Ace, or at least since the 19th. They've changed since the 12th, which is when I'm doing this market review since. But yeah, from the 19th onward, these top four cards have not had any sales that affected the price, it seems. So maybe people are finally cooling off from buying these uh, bubble prices. But yeah, that's my market review for this week. Not this week, this period. Uh, any key takeaways from here? It looks like the market is starting to calm down. It's not a correction, it's not going down to how it used to be. This may be the new normal until they announce any um, substantial reprints. They announced reprints would be coming, but no further details than that. So it's very up in the air, very vague. I do still think that the English market is behind on upcoming trends that will happen, thanks to cards in EB01 and OP07. So if you can get ahead on that, I think it would be a good idea. And yeah, I just really wanted to show off the tournament tabs I added. I worked really hard on these. I worked hard on getting all the data into my new data source as well. So I hope it entices you to maybe subscribe, be a Marketeer patron to get access to this dashboard, figure out all the cool features in it and how they could help you with whatever you're trying to play this game for. And cart market data is coming very soon, a lot sooner than I had uh, initially planned. So we're going to start seeing TCG player and card market data side by side soon. So I hope you're excited for that. But for now, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of these videos and like if there's anything that you want me to cover in future videos that i don't already cover bye Cardi Kaizoku.